Okay, so today I want to share with you and talk to you about two important issues. One is a starter page. Now, the starter page I talked about in one of my previous videos about a year and a half ago, but it seems like some of you are still confused about this. The other thing we're going to talk about today is a 960 fluid grid layout. Now, I built a fluid grid layout myself inside of, inside of Illustrator. Now, if you're good little puppies, I will share with you and I'll let you download my PNG file for my custom grid. This custom grid is my own system technique. It's a 960 grid. I didn't make that up. But how I did the grid is to totally my technique. So understand what the starter page is. Now, don't confuse a starter page with a template. A template is not a starter page. As an example, these are starter pages. Okay. Now, most of these starter pages come from Dreamweaver, the people at Adobe. I've created my own starter pages down here. Here's a 950 12 grid starter page system. Here's a generic start page for Adobe Edge files that I use. So how do you create a starter page? Well, a starter page gets built like any other Dreamweaver document, complete with style sheets and CSS rules and tags and ID tags and HTML, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, where do you put that information? Well, okay, that information goes inside the Adobe Illustrator folder. So if you look down here for a second, okay, inside the Adobe, Adobe Illustrator CS5 folder or CS4, this works in dating back to CS3. Inside the configuration folder, inside the built-in folder, inside the layout folder is the starter pages. So as an example, if I go to my little Mac trick here, if I and click on this, I can go, I just screwed things up here. My mistake, okay. So I'm gonna go to my directory for my CSS, okay. So from here, I go to built-in. Inside the built-in folder is the layouts folder. Inside the layouts folder, it's all my starter page layouts. So whatever you save in here becomes a starter page. Now what I've done here is I, in addition to making my 12 column grid layout page, I also put the image for the layout inside the images folder. Now this is a very, very important step to take care of. This graphic is not going to transfer itself to your local folder. So it has to happen you have to take this graphic, copy it, or option drag it someplace else, okay? So this graphic for the grid needs to be inside the folder that you're going to use for your home directory, okay? Now, if that sounds confusing, I'll make it very simple. So as an example, on my desktop, I have a folder called Websites, okay? This is gonna be my, my website folder is my home directory folder. Then I have a mock client website, which I generically call client project one, two, three. Inside that folder, I have the images folder, and that's my grid right there. This grid right here is the same grid that was in my starter page directory. I just want to be very clear of the fact you need to copy that, copy and paste Macintosh, copy and paste Windows, copy from that directory and put it where you need it to go. So how do we create a starter page? A starter page is created, it's just like we've done in previous videos. But when you save the file, the file gets saved inside that folder, inside the folder, inside of Dreamweaver, inside of built-in, inside of layout, just like I talked about a second ago. So that's where the starter pages are stored. Now, if you get confused by this, you can just do a web search on, I'm sorry, web search. You can do a computer search to find uncommon liquid, and you'll find the page or HTML three column, and you'll find the directory to that page. So that's where the starter pages are kept. Starter pages are not, not template pages. Those are starter pages, the same pages that you find right here. So as I just shared with you, you can create your own custom starter page. I'm gonna do that by clicking right here. This is my 960 fluid grid, 12 column starter page. Now, very important step. Nothing's going to show up 
the grid's not going to show up until we save the file because this has to be saved in a place where that PNG file lives. So in this particular case, I took the PNG file Okay, so I took the PNG file and I'm going to save this page inside of my client folder, which is my website. So this website is my root directory. Now, if you're not sure how to set up a website directory, I have a video for that, which I'll have a link to that. It's very simple. You just go to site, new site, define the site. So as an example, let's actually do that. So I already have this site defined. If you don't, just go to new site, manage sites. So then, I said this particular website, you know, I'm not talking about FTP at this point. I'm just defining the site because all the assets for the site need to be part of that folder. So I simply name the site, give it some kind of name that makes sense to you. I would typically give it the name of the actual website. Then I just click navigate your way to where that site is kept. Okay. Notice importantly, this is not my root folder. This is my root folder from the desktop. This is my root folder, okay? That's the root folder. So I choose that as my root folder, okay? So that's how the root directory is set up for that particular folder, okay? Any questions? Of course not. All right, now I need to save this file, and I'm gonna save this file inside the root directory inside of a separate folder called client project. And we're gonna give the same name as this file. We're going to call it index version 1 as opposed to index version 2, version 3, version 4. Now, the second I do that, that's when I can see my grid. So here's my 960 grid. So we're just going to call this, you know, mysite.com uh, client layout version 1. Okay, always get in the title, always get in the habit of always get in the habit of saving your file and titling the page. So here's my 960 grid. Now, before we go further, I just want to share with you, for those of you that are new to my videos here, I'm working in classic mode. And if you're not in classic mode, simply reset classic mode. Now, I want you to close all the palettes except the CSS palette. If the CSS palette is not up there, simply go to the window menu, window CSS. Now, for those of you new to my videos, I do have a voice issue. I'll try to speak as clear as possible, but I have a spasticity in my vocal cords. So some words of mine are hard to pronounce or they get muddled. So I'll try to be as clear as possible for you. Okay, so if you can bear with my voice, I teach master techniques based on my 25 years of doing Adobe professional training. There's not a, another program out there that teaches the technique I share with you. I keep things so incredibly simple, it's frightening. Now, I just want to share some techniques with you. This is a 960 fully grid. If you do Google search, it's basically in the industry standard for the past three years, 960 grid. 960 grid actually gives you a 940 live area. So as an example, this purple area is my 10 pixel of margin to the left, 10 pixel margin to the right. 960 minus 10 to the left, 10 to the right is 20. So therefore the space between here and here is 940. Now, in addition to what makes my grid a little special as far as navigation, is I broke the grid up into third sections. These sections represent 320 pixels, 320, 320. 320 times 3 is 960, plus 320 is the size of an iPhone app, minus the margin. So what we have going on here is this is 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 grids at 60 pixels each. So okay, I just want to share with you some fourth grade whole number math here. So if you were to take 940 divided by 12, 
you would get this, okay? Now, that's a wacky fraction, right? So if we take 960, which is the full width, and divide by 12, we get this, 80 pixels. So each section here, each section here is 80 pixels wide, plus 20 pixels of margin, so it's 80. So as an example, it's eight times 12. So 80 pixels times 12 equals 960, okay? So basically, if you take this section plus the grid here, plus the grid, so I just wanna share with you how this works. So this is 60 plus the margin space, 20. So it's 60 and 20, 80. So it's 80, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 stops here because there's no, there's no margin space. You understand what I'm talking about here? So between here and here, it's 80 pixels, all right? So this is one section, two sections, three sections. So I don't have 12 whole sections. I have 11 sections plus no margin. That margin, that leftover space, is taken on the left and the right, which is 10 pixels. Therefore, again, if you do the math, the entire section divided by 12 is 80 pixels wide. Now, why is it important? Because the way that I set this up here, this is basically set up to be X amount wide. So again, when doing fully grid design, you could basically say that if I want to fit inside my iPhone, I need to be inside of this area here, because it's 320 pixels, okay? So that's how it works. So in our next video, we're gonna build this using the grid system. I just wanted this video to focus on how the grid works and how the grid thinks, okay? So 960 grid system plus the starter page is a healthy combination of great production techniques. Production techniques is what I'm about. That's what I teach, I share with you my techniques of how to do this the right way, how to think smart, how to think Dreamweaver. Now, a little PSA here, public service announcement, announcement or, or specifically, Robert's service announcement. Now, I'm gonna put a link in here to my new, which is gonna launch, uh, for those of you who don't, don't know this, I have been a beta tester Adobe products since uh, the beginning of Adobe, just about, since 1990, 1989. Now, I can't share with you the new features of the Adobe CS Suite products other than what they already talked about on the Adobe site. So for Dreamweaver, if you go to the Adobe website, there are things like for mobile apps and fluid grid built into the new Dreamweaver. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is Dreamweaver is going to launch about May 10th, 12th, 15th, someplace in the middle of May. Five business days after they launch, so as an example, they launch on a Friday. By the next Friday, I'm going to launch my own tutorials for CS6. Six. CS6. It's going to be a full package tutorial. It's going to be close to 50 new tutorials, plus my techniques of using Illustrator for prototyping, plus my techniques of using Adobe Edge for HTML5 and jQuery animation. This is a full retail package here. This is not free videos, okay? This is something that you can make money on. Now, the fee that I'm going to be charging here, and this is for the first 220 people who sign up, it's gonna be $109, right? I already sold, I just launched this this, 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 this morning about this whole new CS6 video package I'm offering. I've already sold close to 75 of them. So I have, do the math, 220 minus 75. As I'm recording this, perhaps I've sold more. So I just want to share with you, if you're on a budget, I respect that. So for $109, not only you get my full CS6 package for how to do this, including video for the web, audio for the web, illustrator for mockups, et cetera, et cetera. Plus, here's the big catch. Actually, it's not a catch, it's a big plus you're going to get for the next 18 months updated video tutorials. I plan on publishing at least, say, three to five new tutorials every week about CS6 and the CX6, CX6, say that 10 times fast, CX6, six framework, okay? So for an entire 18 months, in addition to paying the one-time fee of $100, you're 
you're going to get all the goodies as the months and months go by. And if there happens to be a new update to CX, CX7 in the next year and a half, well, that's a freebie. Okay, I'll do that for free. So if you shop around, you're not going to see a package like this. First of all, it's my proven time-saving techniques that you're not going to find anyplace else. That's the big plus. Now, for those of you that can't get in before the I sell out of 220 of these, I'm just making this offer at the lower price of 220. After that is 329. I still think from what I'm offering, 329 bucks. In fact, I think five. In fact, let's 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 go nuts here. I think if you had to pay two thousand dollars for my techniques, it's still a bargain because these are techniques that are going to keep you ahead of everybody else. These are techniques that you're not going to find someplace else. These are techniques going to help you keep your job. Now, I've been posting stuff for free on YouTube for the past two years. I'll continue to do that on a smaller basis. But if you want the serious, real meat and potato stuff, guys, this is the real world. You're going to have to pay for it. Okay? I'm not asking a lot, but I'm, what I'm offering in return is a lot. So in our next video, we'll put this fluid page together, and I'll talk to you soon.